So um, how, how does everybody else want think? Like, Bill, I know you, uh, you sent an email the other day. I know you've got ideas for things. Like, how do y'all propose that we move forward with actually making this work? Well, I got to dig up my email because I haven't finished my second cup of coffee yet, so I have no idea what, <laughs> what I said then. But um, one Sorry of the to biggest... put you on the spot. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, I was thinking, you know, as we go back to like Skills USA and, and we watch, you know, the, the state competition or the regionals and, and what have you, but mostly the state when, we, yeah, definitely the state. When you've got something like a, like a SEFCA and what they do, and what makes them such a force? And I was trying to say, well, why can't MEFCA do that? And there's a couple of things that popped into my head. First of all, trades are, are in high demand. There's a lot of employers looking to hire kids with that kind of training. Uh, they've got a lot of industry support. Um, given ours with audio, video, technology, and film, um, they could fit anywhere. So who do we go after to have that kind of support for MEFCA that can really help drive all that? You know what I mean? Because I, I, we do need a voice. We need a, a single solitary voice. And the problems that we have are one, that it's all voluntary. You volu I mean, we don't have a paid position. There's no dues or anything else that go into that. There's no sponsorship that helps um, get somebody that can act as our voice on our behalf, and I would imagine SEFCA has that kind of backing. Uh, at least they've got people from industry at the table to say, hey, let's help drive this this message and this is what we need out there. Um, so I think you're right, we all have to do it, but who's gonna organize it? Because we're all doing extended day and a million other things and filming on the side and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and I applaud you Josh, for, for staying with it as long as you did, especially, you know, having a family and, and changing schools. We'll take you back, though, by the way. You know, Cobble. Thank you. I'll, I'll take you back in a heartbeat. Um, but that's – so we got to figure out how we want to do that, and then who's going to do it? How do we want to divvy this up? I mean, many hands make light work, but we got to we got to figure out and define what, what all the hands are going to be doing, what needs to be done to make that happen. Yeah, and I think last time I had said that, you know, it would be good if we divided everything up into, uh, one, if we realized that there are going to be some statewide competitions and then there would be some more regional, local type competitions. But I also thought it would be good if we divided up into the broadcast and video side, the film side, and then the audio side. And I think if we can maybe start there, start with dividing up into larger sections and say, okay, hey, this is, you know, this is my area of interest or this is my area of expertise or whatever. And I really want to invest in this in our students in the state. If we can get groups of people in those areas, uh, I think that's like a good first step. So is there like, is there a way that uh, like, I mean, would y'all like for me to push out like a link for y'all to like sign up and say, hey, I want to do this, um, that kind of thing? Would that be the best option? I think that's a good start. Uh, that's another one that would be good is kind of coming up with a common calendar. So like if everybody's got like local events and things that they are doing, just sharing out, okay, I'm planning on doing a, a film festival in this month. Everybody is welcome to join, you know, that kind of thing, just a common common calendar to get us started yeah Where would you that share can, that? i mean i can i can create a google calendar or whatever for us to do that or i can we can work with uh taiga um to have one that's housed because that was one of the reasons we're, we're kind of putting everything through the taiga brand is because if you know if if we host it on on mine or josh's and then josh or i leave the business or, or anything anything happens, it still lives there. So um, we can, I can talk with Matthew. I'll send him a message now to see if I can get access to that calendar too. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'll, I'll work on putting together a survey to find out where people's interests lie. 
Adam, I think uh, your whole thing last time was being there to support each other. Right. And so I think having the, the calendar, I think that really does help us to have a place where we can go and say, okay, yeah, this is coming up. And then we can tell our kids, you right. know, it, I mean, just think if, <laughs> if you go from not getting anything from us to getting like an extra entry per like region of the state, that's, you know, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes a huge difference. So I, I think this is a great way for us to support each other. And I like the idea of those three categories, broadcast, film, and audio. I, uh, I think that's where it fits for us. If we wanted to, we could, uh, you know, we could say animation, you know, but I have a different thing. Tom could run that. But um, I, I don't know that we necessarily need that because animation can fit under any of those. So, so I, um, In our animation session yesterday, we had um, 12 to 15 people. Yeah, about a dozen. Wow. Yeah, it's it's growing. I learned a ton. You guys were awesome. Jonathan, you were amazing. Thanks. Appreciate all your help with that. So I have a question. <clears throat> when when you were talking about having an entity to run this all under, when I was doing engineering, I was on the Taiga, the the engineering affiliation for G E T E A, um, or not 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 for uh, not for GACT the engineering board for, I guess, the engineering affiliation for GACTI. Does Tiger the same kind of thing if they have their own executive board, um, right. but it's part of GACTI? Yes. So could we run it under that and so we already have the board set in place? Uh, I mean, we can, we can talk about, we can talk with them about it. Um, and go from there it they how do i say this they are we got to be more active in taiga um okay. and 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 i'm gonna lead i'm gonna um lead the charge on that this year um and run for a, a position or two um but right now it's automotive and construction i mean that's uh taiga t-i-e-g-a um so yeah, I mean, that's just been something, and, and I've always made the excuse, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Um, well, Max, at the last um, at the last winter conference, was upset because no one would run against him for vice president. He's been vice president like six years now. So, Poor um, guy's trying to get out of there and no one will do it. <laughs> he really, like, he really like, it was a joke that he was like, I just, like, I will give you $20 if you will try to take this. So... Um, yeah, but that's, that's what we've got to do or, or find those places that, uh, where we need to be. And then if we did something like G E T E A does Georgia engineering technology education association, cause they have, they have an executive board, but they also have area chairs where they split the area up and the area chairs are in charge of, you know, that particular area and having meetings with the teachers and like twice a year. So all the requirement is, um, I didn't know if we wanted to follow something like that. You know, this, I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I'm going to confess. I haven't, as much as I'd wanted to get involved with Taiga, I, I haven't. And every GACD, I sit in their meetings going, I should. <laughs> I just, I didn't have all my calendars in front of me to say, okay, when and how. But, yeah, I think we have to, I don't have a good enough understanding about how Taiga's arranged and, and how that impacts as far as video is concerned. But again, a lot of the, what's going on in Taiga is trade. And there's specific industries, there's specific support, there's specific backing um, that helps drive all that. And that's where I'm scratching my head going, how do we do that for video? Well, I think, and, and, and Bill, you and I talked about this uh, the other day. I think that right now as video teachers, um, I have never had more requests from other industries asking for connections to video people. Um, I think that our role is um, is is far more important. I mean, I, I had to do a video to teach automotive teachers how to get video off of their phone. Um, so I think that our role is far more important now than it has been. And there may be ways that we can um, capitalize on that, for lack of a better word, to to really leverage what we've got going on. So that is that is my 
my plan kind of in, in my role here is is to to push you know Matthew and those guys Matthew White and those guys to, to reach out to high schools for the areas where they are working um, and, and go from there to build up AVTF across the board the next step with the actual industry side is a little tougher but I think that if you know if we have a kid who makes great helps make great construction tutorial videos well then the um, construction industry would go hey I need that kid because those that's where the money is there are organizations who literally um, headhunt for these construction companies to go find kids 18 20 years old to drop into jobs all over the state and if they can do some kind of video training that kind of stuff that is that is where our power is going to lie so how do we do a is that a an outreach program on our part in terms of in our local communities and what have you or chambers of commerce or yes. business associations <laughs> anywhere anyone you can get to let you make a video for them um preferably for pay but sometimes just for pleasure um or for for propriet or prosperity or what have you um and then go from there uh colleen no i don't know that there's any kind of rubric for that it's just it's a training video it would just be something to to show people how to drive nails and cut boards and i know that that is very rudimentary and but that's that's what i'm thinking yeah, just take a look at the skills in terms of what you want to accomplish with your video production you know are you looking at framing you're looking at editing lighting or what have you and just create your own short little rubric for that yeah I was just on the video maker website yesterday and uh, saw a, an article that they have on how to do instructional videos. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah. So I'm like, you know, if we could take something like that and, and you could almost build a lesson from that with creating a rubric that goes into the whole construction video thing. Like, I mean, if somebody could put that together and I think that that's what this whole thing is for is, you know, maybe somebody could say, okay, Hey, I want to do this and, you know, share it with the group. Uh, I'm kind of working on the form right now. So I'll, I'll like keep listening to the conversation and jump in as needed, but I think we're making progress here. Guys, one thing that I'm, I'm a little concerned about is we, we keep talking about uh, connections to industry and, and trades and things like that, but um, we're not really addressing the artistic merit of filmmaking because filmmaking does require a lot of, um, you know, gappers, electricians, things like that, but it's, it's an art form. It's a group art form. We gotta, we've got to be able to address that portion of it if we really want to be looked at as something that is serious from the film industry. Um, because you can you can make videos all day long, but if if it's not like a story driven kind of film that has some artistic merit to it, you know we're, we're not we're not doing the complete uh, job here. Yeah, Jason, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm more of a of a broadcast slash industry industry type video thing, a, a commercial production versus filmmaking. So. Um, how do we do that? How do we enter in? Is, you know, since we've got those three categories there, what do we do for film? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, there are actually some film video standards for uh, fine arts in Georgia. So it might not be a bad idea, and I've already got a few people I could reach out to about that. It might not be a bad idea to kind of incorporate some of what they're doing into what we're doing, because we're really good at the how-to. That's where we specialize. We know all the technical how-tos. Um, but we need a little bit of help with the whys about why we're doing it. So, um, so we got to kind of go out of our comfort zone a little bit and and talk to the the, the artists, which I know is kind of daunting. But um, I'm married to one though, so I've got an in there. So there you go. Good. Okay. Hi. Can I? This is Eve. Um, I just watched the previous conversation right before I watched this, and I made a lot of notes. Uh, so I teach in uh, South Atlanta school, majority African-American, nobody, not a single person has any interest in broadcast. They don't watch anything broadcast. The only thing they watch is YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and occasionally a film. They don't even watch television. I'm asking them, you know, what, what are you watching on TV? And they're like, well, there's this YouTuber. And so all of this broadcast industry driving kids in the news, I don't even do news. I have the setup. No one wants to do it. Uh, and I give them the choice. I figured 
the standards are rather loose as long as I'm meeting my standards. I'd rather the kids, you know, student voice and choice make those decisions as to um, what type of projects they want. But uh, I have some notes from the previous one. So I hope I'm not driving anybody off topic. Um, I notice a lot of you guys do a lot of things after school and I don't know how your schools are set up. Mine is not set up that way. My kids don't have cars. I don't send out equipment. We don't have transportation to other places to make commercials for other people. We're very much limited to what we can do in school. So a lot of things I'm hearing are involving after school and doing this and all of that stuff. But I, I'm gonna ask you to consider uh, the kids that don't have the resources or vehicles or anything to do that. And I don't have the resources to arrange a bus to take my kids on a field trip to go shoot a commercial. So, yeah. Yes. So I'm in middle school and I wanted, and they wanted to do, um, try their hand at doing a talk show where they interview somebody in the community. I'm walking my dog and I find this, the youth triathlon person setting up and I speak to him and he, and he said, yeah, I'll be willing to bring props and things like that and come to the school and let the kids interview me on set. And this was all just like, you know, I had to like write the, write the lesson plan for this pretty much. And while we have a lot of takeaway, like with lighting and the positioning of the camera that they need to figure out, it was just a great learning experience because he came to us and he brought the bike, the triathlon bike, he had the poster that we put up on the wall behind him in the interview set. And I'm just thinking, think of something like that where they can come to you um, and you can talk to them and they can get that kind of an experience. I don't, I mean. I think that's a great idea. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah um, and we've done the same thing with uh, charities. We, we get local charities from our level two and level three class where we invite them in and we'll do a video and they'll get four or five options that they can choose from. It doesn't cost them anything because it's a class project. It just, it's all done in school. They can either do well, now with Zoom, but they've come in, they've done interviews. Um, if we needed to get B-roll, we can either they can supply it for us and the kids can edit it in there, or if the kids can go, that's great. But uh, we bring them on in, um, and that's that's how we do it with, with local charities. We've also partnered with our local chamber of commerce, too, to produce videos and things like that. And Eve, I'm right there with you. I don't, you know, I, I am not a let's do this all after school thing. I've got my own life. I'm in grad school. I don't want to, I've already, I'm already stretched way too thin. So I'm a fan of doing projects that I can incorporate into my classroom, whether or not like um, it's a short film project or it's a new show, whatever, like we have that if I can um, incorporate these contest ideas into what I'm already doing, you know, that, that would be a huge help. I agree. And like, so I love 48 hour film festival and those of you who can do it. Awesome. That's not something my school can participate in. And then I'm in my own family situation. Um, I'm now a single mother. I can't do overnights, weekends, football games, um, all of this after school stuff that I've been seeing throughout all the conversations mm -hmm. uh, involve a lot of stuff that happens well beyond school. And I'm just not in that position. Uh, so I just ask that as we proceed, let's let's create, I'm not saying don't have 48 hour film festival, but let's also be mindful that there are a lot of schools who either financially or like my kids, they don't, they don't have transportation, we can't really do that. Um, and I'll, that's my other thing, I don't know who is with Skills USA. I'm, I'm at this point, I'm done with Skills USA forever. I'm not even, I'll teach it for one day like I'm supposed to and that's what they get from me. Um, but I noticed most of the competitions for digital and everything like that involve going to state. And when I looked at taking my kids to state, you're required to stay in a hotel. Well, we live, I'm, I'm basically about 30 minutes south of the airport. Why do I need to stay in a hotel to go to Skills USA? Well, there oh, you don't need to do that. All you got to do is contact Ashland. I mean, we I drove did. the states back and forth, and we had we were fine as long as we were within I think twenty miles. Twenty five miles. We're twenty seven miles. Oh. So they said no. 
So, and we don't have, again, I can't stay overnight. I have to take care of my own family. So that's one of my issues with Skills USA is they're shutting my kids out of the process um, because me personally, I can't go. And my, we're not gonna raise the money to pay for hotels. And I really think it's ridiculous when the majority of us are within driving distance of the, the, the Georgia World Congress Center for a day, why we have to stay in a hotel. So for that reason, I'm I'm done with Skills USA. My kids can't compete because we are not going to stay in a hotel, and I think that's stupid. But that's that's where I am, and I'm ready to move on. And I love the Taiga idea, and I love the film festival idea. And my kids are more interested in the film festivals. Uh, we did one. We we actually did a little film that went through several film festivals, and we got the laurels, and we made the posters. And I gave each kid on the on the crew a poster that has the laurel with the film festival that they were in and they absolutely loved it. So for my students, that's more in line of where they want to go. And I just wanted to put that forward uh, for everybody who's considering what our next step is, is I think the film festival route um, or the festival route, if you want to get broader for podcasts and whatever, I think that's awesome. And, and do we need, do we have to have a state organization to pull that off? And that's my that's my question. Well, no, the, the answer the, the answer to that is no. There's no state organization that needed to pull that off. I mean, there are regional. The Cobb County does them. Fulton County does them. Um, you know, there's no there's none of that. Now, I will say that Tyga is not going to steer us away from skills. I mean, that's they're they're all the. It's all in the same vein, for lack of a better word. The same way MEFCA is, in, is somewhat in the same vein, but we can do things outside of skills. Um, and this is going to sound blunt. Please don't take it that way. Uh, and I believe it was Eve about the, techni the technical side of skills. The name of the program is skills. I mean, that's, that's to the technical side is, um, is what they, they teach. Now, they're not the end-all, be-all. That's why we're having this conversation. Um, I, we, I think across the board have been burned by skills, not, not once, not twice, but three times. Um, and I think this year was a fine example of that um, where we had as a video production pathway, uh, we had probably one of the better skills state competitions lined up. We brought in industry. We had partners. We had great judges. We had all of that. Amatrace had already spent an entire day testing their setup and half a day setting it up at skills when it got canceled. Um, so this conversation is not in lieu of skills. This is a conversation to do something um, additional to something that we can control and then take two skills at the state level, because at the national level right now, we don't have the oomph to do it. If we were Florida, if we were Hawaii, if we were California where they're going in, and sweeping everything, yeah, we would have the oomph to do it, but we don't right now. Um, so this is not circumventing skills. This is something that we need to do as video teachers to protect ourselves when it comes to contesting, to build our brand. You know, when you say SEFCA or TEFCA, people know what it is. When you say MEFCA, people go, what is that? Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, um, not the least of which is we're a relatively new pathway. You know, construction's been around since caveman days. Video production's relatively new, especially in the education space. Um, so, so what I can, go ahead, John. I so I have one of the things we did in Cherokee County this year because of the COVID and the shutdown and all. We we were had just launched our um, student film festival. Well, we had a virtual award show and it was a big hit. But also I remember years ago my students competed in, I can't remember what it was, the Georgia Media Festival. It was put on by media specialists, and and everything was just sent in. You actually had to send the videotape in. They had different categories of film and animation, and it was K through 12. And you could, and it still exists. I just hadn't looked at it in a while. But what, how that would work was that each school that participated had to send a representative to judge, and we would go judge at the state level, and spend the day judging, and then the awards would be sent back to the school. But what we did is we would, so we combined that with our virtual film awards, and 
you know, the teachers could have the medals, we could have whatever we're going to give them, then parents can attend the virtual summit, and then we're, there's not a cost for um, travel and all that. I mean, it's just an idea. Yeah, I don't think we're, I don't think, and I'm still working on that list from the original conversation of festivals that are local that we could send stuff to. Um, I don't think we're hurting necessarily for um, places to send our video. I think that uh, we just have to organize on how and, and come up with a way to do that and then do some stuff that is unique to us. Guys, I, I just yes. want to say that with, um, with um, middle school, there is a lacking. A lot of it talks about high school and up. And I just want to say there, you know, for lack of a better term, they're sleeping on the middle school kids because I see some extreme talent and I, I'm just blown away at the things that these kids think of and, and try to do and then follow through and do. And it's all student driven. And I'm just the one there saying, well, think of doing it this way or think of doing it that way. And, um, when we, when my STEM teacher sends me all of these links, she goes, your kids could do this. Your kids could do this. And then I click on it and then, whoa, it's for high school only. And it's really disappointing. And I just want to promote middle school is almost like the beginning of it. You know, they're not quite yeah. old, but they can get Colleen, there and do it. If you can email me, I'd love to work with you on developing stuff for middle school because I am going to middle school this coming year. Mm -hmm. And I'll be teaching film in middle school. So I would love to work with you on something like that. Absolutely. And that's so something that uh, I know is going to be like, especially with skills, uh, that's got to be on their radar because they uh, like they already have middle school competitions. So I think if we put together some some really strong stuff and say, hey, these kids deserve a chance to, that'll be something that they can do related to skills. But in our conversation last time, we talked specifically about having some of these competitions for middle school as well. So I think that uh, we are not forgetting the middle school. We're, we're not forgetting the pipeline that you guys create in sending us stronger students. So. Uh, we definitely want to support y'all. Um, I, I see Dan, you're there. You've got uh, Robertson from Autry, like uh, can do a good job feeding you kids and stuff. And I think there's a lot of really strong middle school programs uh, that could make this like a, an easy sell for us. And Colleen, well, I will tell you that at the DOE level, the the middle school conversation has been happening to update those standards because those standards – I'm pretty sure we're written in the age of VCR. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at that. I'm thinking, really, really. Yeah, but what's what has happened is every time we start the conversation, and we have started the conversation, um, we have started writing the standards, we have done all of those things. But what um, what keeps happening is is we get bumped. Um, we get bumped, for, you know. And, and I'm sure that now with with the COVID stuff, we're going to get bumped uh, from couple more years at least i would uh, love to, to participate in that absolutely yeah and we're you know we're just i know at the doe like i said it's been four years and we've started the conversations we've gotten the people together everybody circled the wagons and then an edict comes down from above that says we need to push that our effort somewhere else so yeah. um you know and, and those and, and and those things have been good i mean the first one, they were like, hey, we're going to put our efforts in GFA, which obviously has been a great thing. But, you know, every year and it's not necessarily in CTAE or film or video production that the efforts are getting pushed. It's it's across the board. So um, I I plan to bring that up with Dr. Wall and Tim and those guys here in the next month or so. Because it is uh, y'all are the middle school standards are, are way behind. Yeah. The issue with the middle school standards is uh, a lot of us and don't have experience in middle school and middle school runs completely different than high school does. Y'all are doing more like exploration type things, whereas uh, we are doing pathway things. So it's uh, it's difficult for me 
to say, okay, hey, I, what do I need these kids to be able to do when they get to me? Um, I'm thinking so it's, when they get it's hard to, to start. at least have the, the knowledge. You know what I mean? They need to know when you're using the terms and when you're talking, they would be able to say, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I know what that is. Like I did an externship at Fox News last summer, and I'm going through the news thing, and they're, ta- and they're giving me the tour, and I'm sitting – with different people. And I'm saying to myself, okay, hey, my kids know this. My kids know that. Oh my God. I mean, it was relevant for me and it was like validation for me, but I'm saying my kids leaving middle school and should we have that program in my high school for them to go to? They would, they would know, they would like not stand there and like, what are you talking about? You know, they would, they would have that idea. And we need to know that like you said, it's introduction, and some kids want to go into the journalism side of it. And when I get them, and some want to go into the film part of it when I when I when I introduce it all to them, and and both of which work well for me because I like them both. So, but I'm saying when they get to you, you now have them chomping at the bit, saying, "Okay, teach me, teach me, show me where to go." Are, are you teaching ABTF one? No, I'm teaching. Okay broadcast and journal. So I'm doing it really like through journalism, but then my PSAs and my commercials are giving them that whole, you know, video, like that whole taste of how to create a storyboard, how to do an, uh, an art, you know, figure out, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. To some yeah, extent, I- competitions are also helping us to step out of that journalism aspect. And but Josh, I- uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I was just going to say, some some school systems are pushing AVTF 1 down into the middle school. Um, yeah. Because that's what, that's what I will be teaching at Haynes Bridge this coming year, <laughs> is I have a year-long eighth grade class that will that will be taking AVTF 1. Exactly. Well, that's what I was going to say, if, Colleen, if, if you could get them to let you teach AVTF 1 at the eighth grade level. Because then you've got um, you've got standards, you know, which are hopefully going to be updated in the near future. That was another thing is we were looking at, you know, updating the high school standards, um, which is definitely needed. But I think that at least if you had that, then uh, you can kind of if, if you're teaching ABCF one, I think you can even make a really strong argument for getting more equipment into your program. Um, my thing is, yeah, because my thing right now, I get them every nine weeks. I get a group of kids every nine weeks, and I, I have a relationship with the admin now, so I can say to her, listen, so-and-so wants to be in my class. Go ahead and give me so-and-so, and I'll put one extra kid. You know, I, we, we're doing all these finagling, but um, every nine weeks, it's like, start over, start over, yeah. you know? And that's and that is another another thing that as we started those conversations were to figure out standards that you could successfully convey in nine weeks. In nine weeks. Uh, but also that John could teach in a year. That was the other the other problem uh, that we were trying to figure out, and that that was where we we stonewalled before we got um, got through. Um, what I will do, Colleen, is I will look at and see if I can. I've got this, the six, seven, eight standards, and we'll see where we can parallel those things. So you can teach your stuff as AVTF one, um, mm-hmm. and then um, bridge that back to those other standards. I think that that would be the way to attack that now. And um, it won't be till July before I do it, but I will. Uh, I will definitely. Uh, look yeah, at that. if I could get your support and figure out how to do it, and then we can have that feedback. You can see, does it work? Is it working? You know, and that that would really make a difference as should they decide that they want to hear from the middle school standards and created and whatnot, you know? Yep. Just as, as an aside, is anybody working with their middle school feeder schools right now? They closed yes, my program. I was working with them um, before the COVID situation. And I found out that I have a lot of middle school teach middle school students who are interested yeah. in in film but it was kind of hard for me to convince administration to even let me do it because it's not really on their radar 
um, but it helps me with getting those students ready for high school because then they already know me. They know how I teach. And by the time they get to me, they know a little bit about what's going on. So I agree totally with what, what she was saying. I think uh, the middle schools need to be pushed a whole lot more because there are students who are interested in this stuff. Yeah, we've got a local one. I'm working with Lost Mountain Middle School. Um, that was just one of my goals for this year, this past year, was to do an outreach to my feeder schools and Lost Mountain bit. And so they started a club, and so I've been working with a few of their teachers. And when we went and we did their talent show, we did a, a live stream of their talent show. So we had all their kids manning everything along with my crew that went and volunteered as part of their volunteer service hours and so forth. So um, that was kind of fun. But I, now I've got, as I looked at my uh, my, my roster, there's ooh, probably eight students from Lost Mountain Middle School that signed up for level one just because they know what's going to be going on and, and what's going to be happening with that. So um, I'll be looking to grow with that. It, it just may be who, if nothing else, just to reach out, invite your kids. Uh, we were, we had a, a, a field trip plan where the, the Lost Mountain Middle School would come to our program to see the room and meet the kids and stuff like that for a broadcast during our first period um, to do that before the COVID hit. But that might be something, and again, if anybody's got ideas on how to do that, because I'm just whipping things against the wall and hoping they stick. And uh, so, so far, it's been working out okay. This is a great conversation because um, we do have to have the kids in order to participate in the contest. So I teach in high school. I really would love to have um, a, a, an opportunity to get into the middle schools to train to recruit so that, like you were saying, sir, um, when they come to high school, they know me, they know they're, they're comfortable, they're working over the summer, um, getting ideas, those that really want to be in the program, because true enough, just like you all have experienced, I do have like one or two that just want nothing to do with audio video, um, and I'm still trying to motivate them and find out what they like, um, but if anyone, my point, excuse me, if anyone has any strategy, you know, to um, me approaching admin in middle school, even my admin in high school, any strategy that can get me into the middle schools, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, this definitely needs to be done because mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons I left Sequoia because my program, I kept being told it was going to be closed and, and I think they're going to close it. Um, I hate to say it, but they only had enough students for three classes this coming year. So out of five, cause we teach uh, 55 minutes or 50 minutes. And Lynn knows, I mean, I've worked with her, so. Yeah. Well, what I did was I talked to the media specialists and, in the middle school and explained to them what I wanted to do. And I got them on board first. Once I got them on board, then I talked to the principal. And basically what the principal did was just threw the whole ball of wax to the, to the, um, the media specialists. So I had their support 100%, but that's how I got a foot in the door. But you will have, have to go through the principal, but the media specialist is the one who's usually kind of tick, tickering, tackering with that kind of stuff, with the video and, and that kind of stuff. But if you, and, and it was easier for me because she didn't want to do it. They, they, she already had too much on her plate. So she welcomed me to come in and take over that part of what she was doing. But I would say talk to a media specialist, explain what it is that you want to try to do to use the kids as a feeder program. And then what she did was sent out an uh, email to find out how many kids were interested. I had 30, 40 kids that were interested, but they all couldn't come at the same time. So find out what the interest is. And then from there, get the media specialist on board and then from there, the media specialist can talk to the principal. That's another thing, um, because in middle school in my county, I'm only one of two AVTF teachers in middle school. The rest of it is done through the media as a um, as a club or, you know, something of that nature. Yeah, uh, Bill, something that we tried last year that uh, um, Bacarsi did 
And when he left, it kind of fell apart because he didn't leave much for us on how he was doing it. They they tried starting up a Skills USA chapter at uh, the local middle schools, and then use it as an after school program for the middle school, and that gets them to know what Skills is in. The middle school side, it gave us a chance to do audio video as well as the engineering and a few of the other CTAEs so we could get all of our different groups together. Send in some of your sen juniors and seniors and have them teach these kids some things from skills and get them involved. And it was a way to at least get started in the feeder school until we could get something else working. And it also helps with the uh, with your uh, chapter of excellence stuff because that's one of those that helps kick you, in, kick you into the gold side. All right, oh, Josh, you're muted. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I put a form in there. It's just a few, a few questions, and uh, I'd say three of y'all filled that out. But it's just uh, basically it's getting us your name, your email, a phone number, uh, what school you're at, and then what area you would uh, most like to help. I guess oversee. Again, this is in McKenzie. I saw I put this in the the chat. Um, this is for areas where you could help. This isn't areas for competing. So uh, don't say, oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of kids that want to do film. Say, hey, I want to help with film. And then if you've got kids, then they'll benefit from that anyway. So uh, if y'all could go ahead and fill that out. I know we've got a lot of people in here. Uh, if we can just start kind of getting these groups put together. Um, then I will like try to connect everybody so y'all can come up with specific ideas. And then I think if we can get the calendar, especially uh, if we can get that set up with the Tiger website or however uh, that should be done, um, that we can all go to and we could kind of plan around different things. You know, we don't want to have competing events necessarily. So uh, if we can get all of that, uh, kind of worked out. I think uh, we definitely have taken some good steps here. And 100%, uh, I feel like we have realized how important our middle school programs are through this conversation. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we definitely need to, to be looking at, at that. So uh, how we can do more. I had uh, started a... Uh, a media production club at the middle school and went over there and it was kind of like hastily done. And I had a, like, I don't know, four kids the first time, three kids the next time. And then the teacher that was the sponsor there, because you've got to have a sponsor at that school to go in uh, and do that. And then she just kind of, you know, I don't know what happened, but it just, it fell apart. But I really feel like, having that middle school um, program of some sort, whether it's a club or a class or whether you're actually teaching AVTF one, uh, I think that having that at the middle school level really does make a, uh, a big difference in us uh, promoting our programs, which if you're gonna go through industry certification, that's one of the things that you have to prove is that you are doing things to promote your program and that would definitely fall within that category there. So anyway, um, I mean, are we are we at a point where we can wrap up this conversation today or uh, does anybody have any other ideas? How, how do y'all think we need to proceed? Yeah, can someone summarize? We, we covered a lot of ground. So where were just at, did. <laughs> Yeah, but where, what are next action items? Just fill out the form. Um, I dropped it in the, uh, the chat over there. So fill out the form and then, uh, what's up with the, uh, the permissions? What do you mean? I just, Tyson, uh, said, can I change the permissions? Let me see. Access. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Like, Everybody's been able, like I've had people filling it out. Yeah. So I'm not exactly sure what the permission would need to be. I also put it in the calendar uh, 
thing for you guys today if you don't get to it in the chat here. Um, yeah, I don't know, Tyson, what's up with that. I'll email you offline, Tyson. We'll get we'll get you in there. Yeah. Um, so I think the next step is to come up with um, come up with those groups and then go from there. Um, you know, I don't know if you saw the um, the um, comments on Facebook about kind of that northwest corner of the state working on doing some stuff. Um, we can do we can do that kind of stuff anytime. I'm gonna one of the things I'm gonna do between now and tomorrow is create a um, a a form another form. I hate doing forms, but it gives us a spreadsheet that everybody can sign in because the one from the state still has Josh teaching at North Cobb. So um, that's like two jobs ago. So um, most of the people who are on that list are most of the people on this call are not on that list at all. So uh, I'm going to work on, on updating that. And then we can go from there and figure out how to get the right people in touch together in a region. If, we, if anyone wants to do kind of a regional thing or if we come up with different stuff. So um, that's my plan on the backside. Uh, it'll take a little bit, but I'll get it done. Um, anything else before we wrap? I think that again, the next step is to fill out that form um, then I'll send another one probably tomorrow after the last live session. And then uh, we can kind of come up with, with some localized plans as well as some conversations on the state level. Hey, just out of the, the people that have filled out the form so far, we've got six people that have indicated broadcast video and seven that have indicated film. So I think right now we're pretty good there. Uh, we definitely need to get some people on the audio side, uh, just because I know that there are kids who would like to do that. And I know, uh, like we need to reach out to like Lewis and some people yeah. about that, but, uh, yeah, I think this is good. I think this is good first steps. Uh, I'll try to put together some email groups and, you know, connect everybody inside of these areas of interest so that we can hopefully start to move forward with, with getting some of these things done. So, Sorry for uh, for being late. No. It's all good, uh, Tyson. Uh, we'll fill out. Uh, uh, we'll fill it out more than once if you're interested. In more than one. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, thank you guys. Uh, I will get this uploaded for others to witness. Um, if you need anything, email what have you. And uh, again, if you're coming to Beekner session at eleven o'clock, uh, please make sure your mic's muted. It's going to be fifty people. So um, have hey, a great. Uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go um, Colleen, I'm so glad that you're excited and hopeful now. Like that, that makes this entire thing worth it. So <laughs> thank you. Glad I'm to have you. And, and you. I do want to say, Colleen, I was going to send you this email, but I'll say it across the board. Yes. We do value the middle schools more than you'll ever know, because if you have a good middle, every, and I'm not going to say every, 90% of the very successful high school programs have successful really middle school, school programs. Um, or just a middle school program at all, uh, successful or not. So no, we, uh, we highly value you. Um, but we're still trying to figure out how to handle the high school side. Um, <laughs> how we're supposed to do our side, but, uh, we definitely, um, we'll, we, we care about you guys and want to make sure y'all get going. John Cribb and I, thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, y'all have a good one. Thank y'all for being here and, uh, reach out if you need anything.